Welcome to The Fitterist Show, with your host, Christopher Allen, where we explore the art of mind and body conditioning. Welcome to this episode of The Fitterist Show. I am your host, Christopher Allen, and on today's show, we look at different ways to help you break through plateaus. Let's face it, we've all been stuck at times in our fitness routines, and it's frustrating to be putting in all the work and not seeing any results for a while. So I've come up with seven different areas that you can use to help you break through your plateau. Remember when you were first starting out at something? Progress comes very quickly. I remember when I would be able to predictably add five pounds to my bench press every one to two weeks like clockwork when I first started lifting. It was amazing. It was exhilarating. It was, how hard could this be? (laughs) Just keep going. However, as I learned, as I got more proficient at bench pressing, and even though I was using proper form and you know the weights increased, over time, that predictability of going up in the bench press and weight waned and became much more difficult to make consistent progress on increasing my bench press. I started to hit a point of diminishing returns. I hit a plateau. And there could have been a number of different causes, and we'll talk about a lot of these. But it could come from things like doing the same workout routine every day, your diet and nutrition may be off, you might be under training, you might be over training, your sleep might not be as predictable as you'd like, or you might just have unrealistic goals on your progress. So powering through your plateau really requires a focused effort on making sometimes small, sometimes unnoticeable, sometimes major changes to make progress. Let's dive into the seven areas to help you break through. Number one, And I alluded to this earlier. This is changing up your exercise routine. A lot of times people get stuck in doing the same workout routine. And I myself, I work out alone. I run into this one more frequently than frankly I'd like to. I try to strike a balance between if it's working, keep doing it. And also varying the different exercises and equipment that I use. But I definitely fall into this one where I do hit plateaus. Because muscles adapt to a specific exercise fairly efficiently and as you continually perform that exercise the resistance on the muscle decreases over time have you ever worked out with a friend and decided to do their workout routine which involves exercises you normally never do and the next day you're usually more sore than after your normal workout for the same body part because essentially you've shocked the muscles into doing something they are not used to doing essentially doing a different workout and as with anything new at first it'll be difficult And of course, as you do those exercises or that exercise more often, the muscles respond, the body adapts, and that movement becomes easier. The muscles repair, rebuild, and get a little bit more used to that movement. But it's always good to hit muscles from different angles, different exercises, apply different stressors to the muscle for just a more well-rounded and varied stimulation of the muscles. So what are some of the remedies for this one? Some specific things you can do is One, vary the order of the exercises. Do maybe your usual last exercise first, first exercise last, just to mix it up. This prevents muscle fatigue in the same repeated manner if you do the exercises in the exact same order, exact same number of sets, exact same number of reps every single time. The second thing you can do is just change up the number of sets and reps from what you normally do. So if you do three sets of 10, maybe try five sets of five. Again, just to mix it up. Another thing, you can intentionally change up your workout routine. Just do different body parts on different days, different exercises for each body part. Again, we talked about the order of the exercises. Just mix it up every, I don't know, maybe 6 to 12 weeks just to force different muscle stimulation. So just change your workout routine every so often. Another thing you can do is if, as an example, you're working out chest, you could rotate between different exercises for the same essential muscle stimulation. So Instead of the flat barbell bench press, you can go to a machine press. You can do body weight push-ups just for variety. Don't be afraid to try new machines and new exercises and just mix it up. And maybe this one sounds a bit counterintuitive, but I've done this personally, and I think it works. It helps force you to do other things, but I go to the gym when it is very busy, and (laughs) most of the equipment is in use, which forces me to get more creative and do different exercises with dumbbells, body weight push-ups, and experiment with machines I don't normally use. So it's just a way to kind of force me to mix it up because all the machines are in use. Okay, number two is to change 
the pace, speed, or intensity of your workout. So if you do high volume and lower weight, maybe shift that to lower volume, higher weight. If you're used to doing, again, three sets of 10, maybe try five sets of five or two sets of 20 reps. Maybe vary the rest time in between sets and exercises to help boost your metabolic rate. You can use time limits. I've done this before too, where I said, okay, I'm leaving the gym at 5.30 and I'm gonna get as much done as I can in that time period. And that way I set a goal of being done with my workout in call it 60 minutes to help ensure that I'm done in the allotted time and it forces me to work at a pace that is different than quote normal. And on the cardio side, similarly, if you're used to low intensity steady state cardio, maybe try the step mill at an elevated pace for a change, or you could also try high intensity interval training on the stationary bike for a workout. So just again, changing the pace or the intensity of your workout. A third area would be just to change the venue where you're working out. Maybe go to a different gym. I have a membership at a different gym just to be able to mix it up or to have more venue opportunities when I am on travel. You can also mix it up and do a backyard or home workout. We're again, primarily using body weight exercises. You can use exercise bands for just a different type of workout in your home. Again, changing the venue, changing the atmosphere. And you can just do something simple and get outside, go for a walk. Make sure you're shifting, especially if you have a sedentary job Just shift some of that sedentary behavior for active movement. Maybe do some stretching or, again, just something simple like going for a walk. A fourth way to break through your plateau revolves around sleep and rest, and particularly getting more sleep and rest. Particularly if you've been consistent for a long stretch of time, you might just want to take a little R&R and let the body heal, relax. Everybody gets a little burned out, maybe suffers from a little bit of overtraining where the body just fatigues a little more quickly. And just make sure you're getting good sleep. Aim for seven, eight hours of sleep per night. Keep a balanced metabolic rate. And just take a little bit of time off. Don't go crazy and take months off, but take some time off. Let the body rest and then get back at it. And the fifth way to help you break through a fitness plateau is revising your diet. This one is multifaceted, as you may expect, but in episode number five, we talked about the importance of balancing protein, fats, all your macronutrients, your proteins, your fats, carbohydrates for optimum performance. This is probably one of the most impactful changes that you can make in breaking through a plateau. Food is the source of energy for the body, and remember that the very act of tracking and recording your diet will also likely make you more aware of of what you're actually eating. So making sure that you have enough protein to build and repair the muscle that you're breaking down when you exercise and when you work out is obviously super critical. It's the protein is the building block of lean muscle and also has the largest impact in boosting your metabolic rate. So spacing protein consumption throughout the day with each meal also helps. And you can also rotate your protein sources. So if you've been eating egg whites and chicken and fish, maybe rotate in some lean turkey or some red meat or some bison or lean flank steak. Again, varying up the protein sources from what you normally do. Similarly, having enough carbohydrates to fuel your body through the workout is also important. Carbohydrate ingestion before and after and around the workout becomes important. However, you also may be able to adjust your carb intake downward depending on your carbohydrate consumption level. So cutting carbs can certainly aid in the shedding of body fat. So it really depends on where you're currently at with your macros, whether it makes sense for you to shift some of the carbohydrate consumption before, during, and after your workout, or potentially cut back on carbs depending on the carbs you're already ingesting. Another thing you can try is intermittent fasting. This can be, you know, a good tool at the arsenal, particularly if you're looking to lose weight. There's multiple methods of intermittent fasting. You can do daily fasting for 12 to 16 hours. You can fast for 24 hours, one to two times a week. And things like very low calories on the weekend and eat normally during the week. Those are all different variations and methods of intermittent fasting. In my opinion, if you're eating healthy and taking in good macros, There's not really a big need to give your GI tract a break via fasting, but if you're eating non-ideal, you're eating a fair amount of processed foods, then I think intermittent fasting gives your digestive system a, a break and time to recover because it takes more time to move those processed foods through your intestinal tract. And it just takes more time to digest processed foods, more work, more time, more energy on the GI tract. 
You can also check your fiber intake, making sure you're taking in enough fiber via veggies. You can look at your salt consumption. Remember, excess salt can cause water retention. So if you feel like you might not be losing and shedding uh, fat enough, you can look at that. And even if you are making tweaks or changes, it is important to make sure you stay hydrated. You're taking in enough water throughout the process. And you might also look at your alcohol consumption. Alcohol, while it obviously may taste good, it really offers no nutritional value, just empty calories that you'll need to burn off. And alcohol can also suppress fat burning, so it actually makes it more difficult to burn off fat, not just that from the alcohol, but from other food you might be consuming. So there's a multitude of areas around revising, tweaking your diet, particularly around, in my opinion, the manipulation of carbohydrates. When you ingest them, what carbohydrates you are ingesting, and at what time around the workout. So you can play with some of those and give it a shot, see how it works for you, and see how your body responds, and go from there. The sixth way to help you break through your plateaus is around managing stress. And it's an important one to take into consideration because it impacts not just your physical workout, but your entire person. When you get stressed, your body produces cortisol, which among other things can also interfere with learning, memory, uh, lowers your immune function. It can, can lead to increased blood pressure, cholesterol. It's linked to higher rates of depression, etc. So things like physical activity, focused meditation, laughing, social connections, and music have all been studied to help reduce stress and reduce the production of cortisol. And overall, I think you want to just try, I try to reduce the drama in your life. (laughs) It really makes a big difference. And the less stress that you have, the more relaxed that you are, the more you can focus at the task hand, whether that's working out, doing your job, being with your significant other, and just enjoying life. The seventh area you can look at to help you break through plateaus is really around measurement and measuring what matters. We talked in episode five about tracking macronutrients across protein, fats, and carbs, so you have a good idea of your food and and nutrient consumption. And that's an important tool to look at, to see how you're responding to your diet plan and how that's affecting you In the gym, when you do go to work out, the energy level that you feel, the clarity and focus that you have when you're working out. Other measurement areas that you can use, here's a simple one, is the awareness of how your clothes fit can also give you a guidepost with regard to how you're doing in your body transformation. It doesn't have to be anything ultra sophisticated. You don't have to do water tank submerged body fat analysis. You can, certainly, and that gives you a much more accurate reading, but just Notice how your clothes are fitting on your body as you go through your transformation. Another thing that I'll mention, because a lot of people like to use the scale, and I'm not a big fan of using just the scale. Certainly, it is a data point, but in my opinion, way too many people rely on that single data point that arguably is not really even a measure of lean body mass, and they rely on it way too much. So as a data point as part of a collection of other data points. And again, they can be simple. They don't have to be sophisticated analysis and spreadsheets on things. But as a single data point, I think the scale does provide a better context for absolute body weight as part of the measurement portfolio. But just as an absolute number, I mean, the simple fact of muscle weighing more than fat should trigger people to understand that if the scale doesn't move downward, doesn't necessarily mean you're not getting in better shape, you're not getting leaner, you're not improving your body in its transformation. Another thing you can do is body part measurements. And I would be a little careful of not doing them too frequently because your body doesn't change that quickly. But it can provide absolutely a gauge of where you're losing fat, where you're gaining toned muscle, and just measuring different body parts over time and see how they respond and change as you break through your plateau. So those are seven areas you can tweak and investigate to help you break through your plateaus. And plateaus, while frustrating, are a natural and normal part of almost every fitness journey. And you have to take plateaus in stride. Remember, progress is not an ongoing linear progression. There'll be periods of sideways. There'll be times where you're going sideways. There'll be times when it just goes up and down and some weeks will be better than others. But with health and fitness, like finance in episode six, we are playing the long game. We're trying to maximize our health 
for the long term. And continuing with that financial analogy, the stock market. It has good days, good weeks, bad weeks, bad days, bad months, bad even years. But in the long run, investors have been rewarded with positive gains over time. And with fitness, it's very predictable. There will be setbacks. There will be challenges. There will be plateaus. But over the long run, you will make the progress toward your fitness goals. The human body is incredibly adaptive. And breaking through plateaus requires pushing the body and pushing your diet, nutrition in new areas that you might not have stretched before. Give some of these a shot to help you break through plateau that you've encountered. Let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear some of your success stories. Thank you. Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to The Fitterist Show. You can follow us on Instagram at Fitterist Mind Body and on Twitter at Fitterist Mind. If you enjoyed this episode, please send it to a friend or subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future episodes of The Fitterist Show. My name is Christopher Allen, and make it a magical day.